Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 72 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. As usual, the pace is quick out here, so let's dig in. Beginning this week's update at the build site, the payload base section structural test article S24.2 rolled out of the high bay and into the ring yard. Construction of the second mega bay saw addition of the third section of the fourth level sliding into place at a quarter after 8 a.m. With most launch site repairs nearing completion, several parts of the launch infrastructure were tested this week, starting with the booster quick disconnects extension on the orbital launch mount. As the clock neared midnight, the Raptor Boost Quick Disconnect engine start lines began testing, firing several times over the night. These high-pressure gas systems start up the turbo pumps for the outer ring of Raptors on Super Heavy. By Saturday morning, the Buckner LR-1600 crane at the Rocket Garden, which was recently disconnected from Starship 26, had been connected to Starship 27. Later in the evening, the orbital tank farm was spooled up for the first time since the first integrated flight test back in April, filling the launch site with clouds. On Sunday, an unusual insulated storage tank arrived at the launch site on one of SpaceX's self-propelled modular transporters before making its way over to the water deluge system area. The tank was lifted into place soon after, taking its position near the high-pressure gas storage canister arrays. The first high-pressure orbital launch mount water deluge test was conducted early on Monday afternoon. Built to dampen the shock of 33 Raptor engines at launch, the system uses gas pressure to push large volumes of water through a hollow steel plate to protect the pad from being damaged. Late in the evening, the fourth and final section of the fourth level of Mega Bay 2 arrived at the build site and was pre-staged in front of the building. Early on Tuesday morning, the fully assembled Booster 9 was rolled out of the Mega Bay and transported to the Rocket Garden, freeing up space in the Mega Bay while the launch site is being readied for the next test campaign. As the sun began to set, Booster 10 was wrapping its first cryogenic proof test at Massey's, verifying the integrity of the booster at flight pressures. As Booster 10 detanked, a new hybrid Starship transport and hydraulic test stand was rolled onto Highway 4 and brought to the build site. This new stand will eliminate the transport to test stand swap step that uses SpaceX's LR-11000 crane from the pre-launch testing process flow. Amidst another late-night test of the launch site's propellant farm, the FireX system, which helps prevent any buildup of flammable gases under the launch mount, was given a readiness test. Early on Wednesday morning, the final section of Mega Bay 2's fourth level was lifted into place. The Buckner-owned LR-11000, which is building the facility, would soon be lowered to have its jib extended for the fifth level. Thursday morning marked the 54th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing and began with Starship 30's payload bay barrel section being rolled into the ring yard staging area. About an hour later, the Ship 30 payload barrel was moved into the high bay for stacking. Booster 9 was soon staged at the entrance to Highway 4, having rolled out of the rocket garden ahead of its journey to the launch site on Highway 4. While this was going on, Starship 27 met its fate with the scrappers. The hull was cut in half above the common dome and lowered to the ground. Once the sun had risen, Booster 9, traveling on board the characteristic highway-wide set of self-propelled modular transporters, headed out to the launch site. The test article S24.2 was taken out of the ring yard and placed inside the bay. As Booster 9 arrived at the launch site, the chopsticks were repositioned to allow passage before being lowered into their lifting position, and the booster was staged for lift onto the orbital launch mount. The engine section work platform was lowered underneath the orbital launch mount, clearing the clamps for securing the booster. Entering the afternoon, the chopsticks were closed around the booster and secured to the lifting hardpoints. Once they were secure, the chopsticks were lifted slightly, then paused shortly after now bearing the vehicle's weight. Meanwhile, back at the build site, Ship 28 was being repositioned inside the high bay and briefly peeked out of the structure before being rolled back in. 
with Mega Bay 2's 4th level standing freely and the future 5th level too high to reach, Buckner's LR11000 was laid down to reconfigure and lengthen the jib. Back at the launch site, crews began to inspect the top of Booster 9, spending about 20 minutes examining the vehicle before heading back down. While Booster 9's lifting preparations continued, the combination thrust simulator and transport stand was brought to the high bay for its first use with Starship 28. As the sun began to set over Starbase, Booster 9 was slowly lifted off the transport stand with an abundance of caution to avoid any damage that might result from a collision. The lift was paused for several minutes to conduct a few checks before continuing, and the booster was then lifted above the launch mount and pivoted over to the mount itself. Once the alignment was checked and cleared, Booster 9 was carefully lowered onto the mount, touching down by 10 p.m. local time. Over at Cape Canaveral, Saturday saw the launch of Starlink Group 5-15, sending 54 more satellites into orbit on the 16th flight of Falcon 9 Booster 1060. Sunday afternoon saw Booster 1058 finally have its seized legs folded in, allowing the booster to be lowered onto a transporter following its own record-setting 16th flight. SpaceX support ship Doug returned with two fairing halves on Wednesday, towing home a short fall of Gravitas with Booster 1060-16 from the Starlink Group 5-15 launch. Wednesday saw the departure of Crosby Skipper towing Just Read the Instructions out to sea for Starlink Group 6-6 launch on Saturday. Meanwhile, at the docks, Booster 1060-16 was offloaded from a short fall of Gravitas to the dockside stands for post-flight stowage ahead of its return to Hangar X. On Thursday, SpaceX recovery ship Bob headed to sea in support of the Starlink Group 6-6 mission, carrying 22 V-2 mini-satellites scheduled for a Saturday launch. Photographers Greg Scott and Ferriel Mohan took to the Florida skies again and brought us a fresh set of aerial pictures of the Space Coast. Outside NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building, crews continue to work on repairing and upgrading Mobile Launcher 1 for the Artemis 2 mission. Meanwhile, partially hidden behind the launcher, new crane parts are arriving as crews begin work on the second Mobile Launcher that will be needed for the SLS Block 1B and Block 2 variants. To the southwest, SpaceX's Roberts Road facility has started to see some new activity in recent weeks. While Hangar X and the east side of the site remains busy, with SpaceX continuing with their record-setting Falcon 9 launch cadence, the west side has seen a steady decline in Starship infrastructure development. The third Starship launch tower still sits with seven of its nine sections built and no piping or conduit installed at this point. Nearby, the QD arm extension for the tower at Launch Complex 39A is still awaiting final fit-outs and its installation on the tower, which seemed like a good decision on SpaceX's part given the recent changes due to the hot staging. The big change, however, is just to the south of the Starship Tower pre-build area. Following the relocation of the Mega Bay hardware to Starbase, SpaceX has now begun using this area to build another tower. The red LR-1200 that was spotted in the previous flyover has now been assembled and is being used to construct sections of what is most likely the new crew access tower for Space Launch Complex 40. In recent months, crews have been preparing the tower's foundation at the Falcon 9 launch pad at Slick 40. By assembling tower sections here and moving them to the launch site when they are ready for installation, SpaceX will be able to construct the second Falcon 9 crew tower with less of an impact on the launch pad's manifest. Once complete, this pad will add much needed redundancy to their Dragon program and likely make NASA much more comfortable with the idea of launching starships at 39A. Several miles to the south, Blue Origin's Cape facilities continue to see steady activity. Blue Origin continues to use the parking area outside of its northeasternmost building as a storage yard for all kinds of hardware and equipment including some HVAC equipment which could indicate that they are redoing the inside of the building. Greg and Ferriel also caught an interesting method that Blue Origin uses for moving parts around the facility. 
A small truck pulling a train of five cars was being driven along the outer road of the facility's northern campus. Since the doors were closed at the New Glen Second Stage Cleaning and Testing Facility, it isn't quite clear if the test article seen inside previously is still there or if it has been moved. Behind the two-cat building was a strange new piece of hardware. Is this part of the testing apparatus that is used inside the building? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Nearby, Blue Origin's southern campus continues to develop with construction in progress at several sites. The expansion of the existing warehouse building now appears to be almost complete, although the scaffolding staircase and the cones on the roof indicate that there is some finishing work still underway. The new Reef Pathfinder building also appears to be nearing completion, at least from a structural standpoint. Along the northern wall, crews have been installing storm drain piping to route the runoff from the roof away from the foundation. Next door, progress is also continuing at the new vertical assembly building. Several man lifts and cranes were around and inside the building as crews worked towards making the building weather tight. White sheeting is being added to the outside of the walls, possibly as a vapor barrier prior to the addition of cladding. Blue Origin continues to prepare their Launch Complex 36 for New Glen testing. Outside the site's hangar, a skeletal horizontal ring section, likely an article used for fit tests, was stored off to the side of the ramp to the pad. Falcon 9 booster B-1060 was on the pad at Space Launch Complex 40, with a payload of 54 satellites awaiting its launch of the Starlink Group 5-15 mission and United Launch Alliance's Space Launch Complex 41 all appeared quiet as the pad now awaits what is likely to be multiple launches of the company's Atlas V rocket while they continue to work towards the first flight of their Vulcan launch vehicle. Next to the shuttle landing facility, steady progress is being made on the construction of the new project Comet Payload Processing Facility. And finally for this week, one of the Falcon 9 fleet leaders, Booster 1058, was being processed on the dock at Port Canaveral in preparation for its triumphant return to Hangar X following its record-setting 16th launch. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update with a splash of Blue Origin, brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out!